The last two monthly builds we've pieced together on this channel have been based around Intel six core processors. First, the X299-7800X gave us a really cool micro ATX build, and then we went all out last month with an 8700K system. It's time to steer back in the other direction, not only in price, but also in platform. Let's take the Ryzen 5 1600 for a spin in November system. The new Dark Base 700 from Be Quiet features a spacious interior with room for up to EATX motherboards, built in PWM fan hub, and legendary Be Quiet build quality with included Silent Wings fans. Take advantage of its full modularity by removing or adding panels or even completely inverting the motherboard tray. Thanks to its LED accent trim that you can configure through any RGB header, it'll look great no matter how you build. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. The Ryzen 5 1600 might be my favorite product of the past year. It's an overclockable six core processor with SMT that right now is an absolute steal at under $200. I've recommended the 1600 to gamers and streamers alike, and it strikes a fantastic balance between price and performance. If you're looking for the most well-rounded CPU on the market today, this is it right here. In order to take advantage of the overclocking potential of this chip, we're gonna be cooling it with a new product from Cooler Master, the MA610P. This is kind of a shrunken down version of their massive Master Air Maker 8 and is much more manageable inside of a case. It has two RGB fan sandwiching and aluminum fin stack and six heat pipes, so we should not be thermally limited at all, at least on the CPU. One of the best parts about the Ryzen platform is that there are different chipsets that allow for overclocking. While X370 motherboards generally will offer more features and probably better overclocking, B350 boards are almost as capable and far cheaper. This MSI B350 Tomahawk Arctic is on Newegg right now for only $110 and looks pretty killer. It's got decent looking VRM heat sinks, steel armor on the PCIe and DIMM slots, and an RGB control header. Now originally the plan for this build was to keep it under $1,000, but I've really had the urge to build a system that includes both a Ryzen CPU and a Vega GPU for some time now. This Gigabyte Vega 56 is coming back down in price to around the $400 MSRP, and availability is also starting to become more widespread. However, it's by no means a cheap GPU, and its inclusion has taken our total cost here to about $1,200. I am excited to see how this combo does in our favorite games. Memory selection when building with Ryzen is very important, both because faster DIMMs provide a significant boost in frame rates while gaming, and also because some kits are still unsupported by the motherboard manufacturers. You wanna be sure to buy a kit that's listed on the QVL or qualified vendor list so that you don't run into any problems. This 3000 speed kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX fits basically every build due to its low profile black heat spreader and near universal compatibility. For storage, we're gonna stay pretty basic here with only a single 480 gigabyte Patriot Ignite SSD. Storage is the easiest part of your build to personalize, so make sure that if you're replicating this project or any project, you get enough to cover your bases. Powering us up today will be a Thermaltake Tough Power Gold 650, a modular 80 plus gold rated power supply that I've had for a few years now. I'll link down below to the most comparable current model from Thermaltake, but just keep in mind, when working with Vega, it's better to err on the side of too much power rather than too little, as these aren't really the most power efficient cards out there. And finally, we're gonna be putting it all in the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 5 RGB, a $70 tempered glass case with included RGB fans. I reviewed this case a few months ago and it will be interesting to see how it performs in an air-cooled system build, given that it has some airflow restrictions in the front. So that's it on parts, guys. On to the build montage.
While clearly a step down from our 8700K system of the GTX 1080 from last month, this Ryzen 5 1600 and Vega 56 combo definitely packs a punch. I'd have no problem recommending this kind of config to a wide variety of users, almost no matter what their use case is. A few notes on how the post build process went. I did run into some cable management issues. There's probably a little bit less depth behind here than I would have liked. I did end up having to jam some wires and cables in places that I didn't really want to. And in the end, I kind of just smushed on the back panel and screwed it in and it actually, it came out okay. But I think that if you're gonna go with something that has additional RGB fans, maybe some additional cabling for other accessories, this case might not be the best choice. Uh, you're gonna run out of room pretty quick. After we got that all sorted out, I did have to run through what ended up being a fairly complicated overclocking process before starting any of my tests. And I suspect that it actually has a lot more to do with the motherboard than anything else. I've used this particular CPU before and I know it can hit 3.9 gigahertz in a high-end X370 board, but anything higher than 3.7 here wouldn't get me a post. Similarly, this 3000 speed memory kit should be able to run at 2933, but I couldn't get the system to function if it was set any higher than 2400. I spent a good couple hours on this, trying different combinations of multipliers, base frequencies, voltages, and timings, but I couldn't do any better at all. I have a feeling that if you were to put this R5 1600 and the same memory kit into a more expensive board with better VRMs and power delivery, you could probably squeeze out some extra power. The underwhelming overclock really didn't have anything at all to do with temperatures though. The MA610P might actually be kind of overkill for this processor as even when overclocked, we didn't even crack 65C. The Vega 56 ran really nice and smoothly as well with a 2.5% overclock on the core, a 100 megahertz OC on the HBM2 and an undervolt. The aggressive fan curve also kept temps reasonable and I didn't see any thermal throttling. The boost clock was fairly stable during stress testing and I would definitely recommend doing an undervolt if you're going to be working with Vega. If you guys are looking for a tutorial on how to do this, I would highly recommend checking out Joker's video, which I'll link down below. Also, if you guys noticed, I couldn't get Ashes of the Singularity to complete at all. This includes all attempted runs at all levels of overclocking, as well as completely stock settings on both the CPU and GPU. I'm not sure what happened, but Ashes is known to be finicky, so I'm not really that bothered by it at all. I'm definitely liking the result when we pair an AMD graphics card with an AMD processor. Although with flash prices being as high as they are right now, it might be a tight squeeze getting a system like this down to the magical $1,000 price point. But I bet we could do it. Cutting the MA610P and just sticking with the included Wraith cooler shaves off like 60 bucks. A 2400 speed memory kit will save you 30 or 40, and you can make some other changes to maybe the storage, the case, or the power supply without affecting performance at all. But even as is, this is a great performer for $1,200, and if prices stay this low on Ryzen 5 processors, I would definitely recommend this configuration if your budget allows. So what do you guys think of our November monthly build? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget that you can pick yourselves up a shirt in my merchandise store and get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. As always guys, thanks for watching.